Chris Pillick. I'm the Central Ontario Regional Sales Manager with Fort Gary Fire Trucks, and today we're going to do a brief overview of the operations of our new SAM demo. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do with this truck is you your pump operator slash driver is going to arrive on scene. You're going to have your master on already as well as your ignition. Once you get on scene, you're going to put your truck into neutral. Then you're going to set your park brake. Once you've done that, you're going to flip your pump from road gear to pump gear. Wait for your pump engaged light to, to come on. You're going to put it in drive, just like a normal pumper. The difference with the SAM unit is, as soon as you do that, what's going to happen is SAM's going to take over. It's going to automatically open your tank fill and your tank to pump and start circulating water. Pump engaged, Sam ready. You're gonna hear a really loud prompt. Now, it, it is loud, louder than usual right now. Number one, we're not at a fire ground, we're inside, the truck's not running. Um, the reason it's so loud is when the truck is running, when there's commotion going on, your pump operator will be able to hear anything, as well as depending on how far away your firefighters are on the attack line, they will be able to hopefully hear that, okay, their line is being charged, so now they know what's coming. All right, so now that we have our pump engaged and Sam has taken over, it's already opened up our tank to pump as well as our tank fill and begun circulating water. Uh, the first thing you're gonna see is that you're running off your tank, tank open. If you look over here, this little icon here is indicating that we are circulating water right now. Uh, the next water supply that the SAM is automatically going to be looking for is a pressurized system. You can see the little fire hydrant right here. Once you've hooked up your hydrant, what's going to happen is right before the MIV, you're going to start venting the air so that the pump's going to get the water directly. Your other option is to go to draft if you want to run off a portable tank. You would just grab the fire hydrant, pull it down to draft. This time what it's going to do instead of venting is it's going to automatically activate your primer. Um, so it's going to evacuate all the air from the system and start pulling your water into your pump. So once you've selected either your hydrant for pressurized system or your draft, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically open your MIV and start closing your tank to pump as well as your tank fill. On this truck it's equipped with an auto tank fill. Once you've started to run out of a certain amount of water, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically open your tank fill to 25% and it's going to start automatically filling that tank. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pretty much bring it right to the top. You'll have about three inches at the top of the tank and that's just used so when you're circulating water you're not overflowing, anything like that. You can program in four separate presets on this truck. Uh, on this particular apparatus what we have right here is the trash line, speed lay one, speed lay two, as well as discharge three. Now also on this truck all of those are foam capable for illustration purposes, we have Speedlay 2 actually says foam on it. What that's gonna do is when I drag that up, it's gonna automatically start flowing foam, whereas these other ones, if I drag up the trash line, Who's charging? and then I go in two, I can manually turn on the foam. The thing about that is if I bring in this one, that's already got foam, Who's charging? the foam's preset to that one to automatically come on. Because these are both foam capable lines, and this is a single point foam injection system, it's gonna automatically give me foam at the other line as well. So right now I have the trash line open as well as speed lay one. There's a couple of different ways that you can turn both of these lines off. Uh, both of them consist of tapping on the icon. One, you can just hit close line. Close line comes up yes or no, we're gonna hit yes. The other way is we will click on speed lay one. You can just grab the stop sign, drag it over, and it's gonna close everything. That way you don't have to you hit a second button to confirm it. So on our presets, we have trash line, speed lay one, speed lay two, and discharge three. They're all set, varying pressures. Trash line and speed lay two are both at 90. Speed lay one and discharge three are both at 80. Um, if you just wanna go right to the preset, all you do, grab your speed lay, drag it up. Who's charging? And it's gonna automatically give us 80. Who's charging?
The other thing that we can do, hit your push to pump button here, grab your discharge one, and you can just ramp it up to whatever you want. Just in case you don't have uh, adequate fire personnel, maybe you don't have enough guys to man 80 PSI, uh, now we can, before we blow the guy off the end of the line, we can go to 45, 50, 55, 60, whatever your desired pressure would be. Who's charging? So the way Sam's set up here, we have six lines open and that's max capacity on this truck. So we have discharge one, trash line, discharge two, discharge three, speed lay one, and the monitor. Now, if I was to click on any one of these, and we're just gonna say that they're currently running at their presets, uh, even though the truck's not running, we'll go to discharge one. What it's gonna do is it's gonna show me discharge one, it'll show me that we're running at 80, and then on the bottom, it's also gonna give me the other five lines that we have opened. Again, to close them, you can hit the stop sign, click yes, or just drag them over. Now we have only five, run five lines running. On the screen next to it here, we're gonna see that we have our intake pressure, as well as our discharge pressure. Right now it says zero because the truck's not running. Um, it's also showing us tank fill, tank to pump, because we're not running off of a hydrant or drafting right now, so we're just circulating the pump. The next screen is the tank screen, so here's where you can manipulate uh, manually your tank fill. You can fill it faster or slower depending on what you're doing, and then you have your tank to pump. It's telling us right now that the valve is open. The following screen is pump info. So on this truck, it's got three anodes. It's telling us anode one, two, and three are all good. It's telling us that our auto lube oil is also good. Gearbox temperature is 34, gearbox oil, it's telling us we have 260 hours remaining and that's gonna be a countdown when the pump is running. Over here we have our pump hours, so that's how many pump hours we currently have on the truck. And then we have our pump temperature. The difference with this truck compared to most conventional trucks that you see is down here we have just a heat exchanger. Usually you would see the heat exchanger as well as your pump bypass. On this truck, we don't need the pump bypass because Sam is gonna do that for us. What's gonna happen is when our pump temp gets up to 120, it's gonna automatically open up our tank pump and our tank fill, start circulating water to cool everything. That's another reason that it leaves at three inches when the auto tank fill kicks in, just to give us that room to circulate the water. So the fourth screen that we're gonna be able to access from this screen here is the engine data, and that's gonna give us our battery, coolant, oil pressure, trans temp, trans gear, fuel rate, engine hours. With the fuel rate, it's gonna tell us how many gallons per hour we're burning. Uh, so if we're really working the pump, we're gonna be doing, you know, we'll say 10 gallons per hour. Um, we know this truck has a 50 gallon fuel tank, so we got on scene right away, it's almost full. We can do the quick math. We have a, about five hours before we're gonna need fuel. Um, if I go back to the pump info screen, you can click over here on pump details. This is gonna give us the serial number of the pump, the model, um, all the information on the pump that you might need. We can go back and go into pump history. In here, it's telling us pump information, dry run time, overheat events, freeze warnings, pumping events. So it's gonna record all of that information if we have issues in the future and we need to get it diagnosed. What we can do is we can download all that information onto a jump drive, which on the back here, is just gonna plug in right here, and then we can send that into Hale, and they can help troubleshoot our issues. All right, so if for some reason we didn't want Sam to do all of everything for us, we can go into manual mode. You can do it one of two ways, is to click manual mode, switch to manual, yes, and now it's essentially just electric valves like you would have on a standard truck with electric valves. Discharge one, all you do is charging. Press the plus to open it more, negative to close it more. You have that for all of your discharges. Now on your intakes, your six inch intakes, your MIVs, you don't get the graph showing you how far open it, your valve is. You're just gonna get closed in transition and open. So if I push left hand MIV and I hold it, it changes to yellow, which means it's transitioning and just keep holding it until it's all the way open. And now it says valve open and it gives us a green light. Hydrant established. The opposite to close it, push the minus. 
Again, it's going to go into transitioning mode, which is yellow. Once it's closed, it'll turn red and tell us valve closed. Now we'll go back into SAM mode. Another way that we can get into manual mode is if for some reason everything goes sideways and we need to get into manual mode very quickly, we're just going to hit the emergency stop button on our governor. Automatically puts us into manual mode. So there's essentially three ways to operate this truck. You can do it in SAM mode, manual mode on the screen. Um, an example we'll give is if a high voltage line were to fall on the truck and for some reason we lost all of our power to our computer screen completely, we can open up the door and each valve is gonna have a manual override that you can, you can open and close using a, a ratchet or a box ant wrench um, and that's for every single valve on the truck. So once we're in manual mode, we can open and close all of our discharges and intakes on this screen. Uh, like I said, just as you would do if it was a truck with electric valves. This screen is now going to act as our pressure governor uh, that you would see on a standard truck. So you can scroll between, right now we're in RPM mode, we can go to PSI mode and use the plus and minus to increase or decrease. You can also use the electronic Verney throttle to do the same thing. Um, now if you want to do your tank fill and your tank pump, you just go into tank and you have that capability on this screen. Presets, right now we have two presets for the PSI on this one, so we have 100 or 125. If we go into RPM mode, what it's going to do is it's just going to convert those into our RPMs, so we have 850 and 1000. All right, so on this particular apparatus, we have a class one smart foam system. So here on the home screen, uh, you can see we have three presets programmed in already, initial attack, exposure, and overhaul. We can have three more programmed in. So what we're gonna do is if we want initial attack, we're just gonna push the initial attack button. That one's already preset to 0.5%. We go to exposure. That one's programmed to 1% and overhaul we're at 0.3%. Now on all of these screens what you're going to see is the foam percentage, the total foam, the total water and the water flow. So it's going to tell us how much water we're flowing um, at the end if we had all four, the, all four of these up here, trash line, speed light one, speed light two and discharge three are foam capable. If we had all four of those it's going to total up our water, uh, what we're flowing through all of them. And then at the end, it's going to tell us how much water we've flowed over the, over the course of the scenario. Um, it's also going to tell us how much foam we've flowed. And you can change these once you're in. So this one, we're in uh, initial attack. It's already at 0.5. If we want to change that, we can just do that using the arrow keys here. Sorry, this is not touch screen. <laughs> yeah, so you can go up to whatever you like. Okay, so if we wanted to go into manual mode, uh, or we had to go into manual mode, we would click here, switch to manual, and now it's going to completely deactivate the tablet. The reason behind that is now that we're in manual mode, the truck's going to want you at the pump panel. So the nice thing about having the tablet with the SAM system is, although I can operate everything from here, I can use the tablet if I need to rehab a firefighter, they can be in the truck. The other thing that you can do is, uh, it kind of frees up your pump operator a little bit. You still have to man everything, but you can step away from the truck now. Um, let's say guys are on an initial attack, they got the trash line, they need, a, they need a different nozzle for some reason, your pump operator. grab the nozzle out of a compartment, go towards the firefighters that need the, the tool at that time, and he still has control of the pump from wherever he is on the fire ground. 
within 200 feet. So the SAM tablet runs on a Wi-Fi system, which means you can be 150 feet away from the truck. Uh, there's antenna on top of the roof. It's a line of sight Wi-Fi, so you can't be behind buildings and stuff like that, but as long as you can see the truck and you're within 150 feet, you can operate it from the tablet. So if you're getting to that 150 feet and you're not sure, uh, the screen will actually, you get a yellow warning on the screen that'll tell you you're nearing the, uh, the distance that you can travel away from the truck. So you can't go any further, you need to start going back towards the truck or stay where you are. So inside the cab we have a VMUX screen on the dash. Uh, this truck's just got the one on the driver's side. Um, so on the main screen what we have here, you know, you got your headlight options, lighting menu, camera, fan clutch, horn, mud and snow. These are just options that we have on this particular truck. We can obviously put other options depending on what your department may need. Um, and program it however you may like. Uh, this truck, we have the E-Master. So as soon as we push this button, that's just gonna put all of our warning lights on. You can press it again to turn it off. The other thing you can do is if maybe you don't want all of them, you want just certain sides on, you can go to the warning menu. And now I can individually turn on uh, my warning lights, um, light bar, front warning, lower, side warning, rear warning, and then I have my front white warning lights and my alternating headlights, so the wigwag feature. In the secondary menu right now, we don't have all the icons used, but we have uh, to turn on your defog fans in the on the windshield, as well as the uh, driver and officer floor heat, which is just under the seats. That's coupled with the standard heating air conditioning unit that we have on the tunnel. Go into is your system info. So this is just gonna give you all the info on this particular truck. Um, engine info, it's gonna give you your uh, serial number, horsepower, RPM. It's just gonna give you all the information, um, filter information that you need for the engine, as well as same thing for the transmission, chassis. Uh, there's some service info in here. Uh, seat info is just your occupant protection. Um, tells you, you know, I'm sitting in the driver's seat right now. I don't currently have my seatbelt on. Uh, that little icon would change green if uh, if I had my seatbelt on. And there's obviously sensors in the seat to indicate whether there's a person in the seat or not. So along with the screen on the side of the truck to run, run the SAM, we also have a tablet in this truck, which you can just take off as you see here. Um, let's say you needed to rehab a firefighter and he was capable of running the pump. You know, it's uh, minus 40 out, he needs to warm up, or vice versa, it's too hot outside and he needs to cool down. He can run the pump from right here. It's the same screen that we had on the side of the truck, and you're going to have all the same features as you would on the side of the truck. Okay, so in the back of the truck here, we have four uh, SCBA-equipped seats. So we have the two rear-facing outer locations, two forward-facing center location, as well as the officer seat is also going to have the uh, SCBA capability. So in this truck, what we have is the Smart Dock system. Um, pretty simple system. All you do is you have your tank on, you sit down, and it's gonna go in. When you need to get out of the truck, all you do is step forward, and it's gonna come up and release your tank. 